Hello, good evening everyone. Welcome back to the kitchen table. Excuse me, just a top up required of this um, very nice Chilean Carmenere Cabernet Sauvignon from 2011. Very nice it is indeed too. So, um, cheers all. Mm -hmm. Right, welcome back to the kitchen table. Um, <clears throat> this evening, courtesy of UA Vision, the UK's number one Flytrex dealer, amongst other things, I have received my Flytrex V2. Tiny little thing. Now, for those of you who aren't aware of what Flytrex is, it's basically a data logger. It sits in between the GPS and your flight controller, and it reads the data from the GPS. It also has a built-in thermometer and a barometer that's very accurate, so it gives its own height and temperature readings. And uh, you'll, if you're a subscriber, you'll remember that I actually looked at the original version one Flytrex, which is here. This is the one from uh, from my vision, and you can see that um, they've done rather a good job of miniaturization here with the new one. So uh, we're going to have a look at it in terms of specs and we're going to install it live. So there's setting myself up for a fall um, and we're going to see how we go. So um, let's have a look first of all at uh, some vital statistics, shall we? Let's get my scales on here. Let's have a look. Let's zero that out. So the old uh, Flytrex core. Nine grams. New Flytrex core. Three. Wow. Uh, the new cable that comes with it. Five. So the cable and the Flytrex core combined, the V2, are way a gram less than the old board. So that's that's a little bit of a saving, and it's certainly. Um, be easy to mount. Now let's remove that and bring it in. Another innovation they've done which I think is going to help is on the old one the cable was uh, one of these standard connectors. Of course to get that to the outside you either have to drill or make a, a little nick in the side or you know you could take these apart and put them back together again but that was causing sometimes some problems. What they've done though, as part of that, is designed a new, very small connector. And this will fit through any of the um, holes already in the uh, in the P2, the Vision, the Vision Plus, the FC40, any of the Phantom range. So that is excellent news. No more messing about with your shell if you want a neat installation. They still suggest that you mount it externally for best performance of the barometer and the uh, temperature sensor. Um, and I've had a look at an internal install in the battery bay, and it will clear. It does make getting the SD card in and out a bit tricky and will involve a little pair of pliers to get it out. And do you know what? I'm not convinced, and I'm probably going to mount it just externally on the side here, where it's out of the way, where I can get to the, uh, get to the SD card. And it suggests for mounting using a sticky pad or something similar on the reverse, and it suggests that you just make sure you don't cover, I don't know if we can see it in the light here, this very tiny hole there in the barometric sensor. As long as that's open and allowed to get some breeze, some, some airflow, that will give you a very accurate height reading. So let's have a look at the install. And it is, it is pretty straightforward. First of all, you've got to open up your P2. If you don't know how to do that, um, I did a video a long time ago on how to open up the P2, what tools to use, what size the, uh, the hex screws are. And you can have a look at that there. Go and have a look at it if you haven't done that. And then uh, pause this one, come back. Ready? Good. So let's um, take the top off. First thing you'll notice is there's a cable here, which is the GPS. I mean, so gently remove that and take the shell away. Oh, oh no. Look at that. My P2 was pregnant and I didn't realize it. Yes, it's a very weak joke, I know. Something I've, else I've been sent to have a look at. That is ridiculously small. We'll have a little review of that soon. Let's put you over there. 
<clears throat> okay, so here we go. So we remove the GPS from here. And what we basically need to do is put a, put a throughput, which is going to be this cable here. It has one of these and one of these. This will simply slot into your GPS connector. This will accept the GPS cable from the lid, which has got your sensor in. And this is then clear to, well, I'm going to put it down this hole here. There we go, that comes out there. There we go, let's have a look. Yeah. And that should clip. Let's have a just uh, have a look here. Yeah, there we go, it clips that way in. Click. That's in. Um, I'm going to put that there. I know it's meant to be a cooling vent, but to be honest, it's not going to block the holes because I'm going to use a generic sticky pad. So let's do that now. Do do do. No, I'm not even going to trim this pad because as long as I, as it says, as long as I leave that hole clear, that's all it requires. Let's peel off the other side. And I'm just going to press fit that. Uh, let's go that side of my bus cable. Can I keep some room for the ventilation? I'm just going to press that in. There we go. Just double check that I haven't done anything stupid. No, I can remove the SD card, micro SD. And that's it. And it's just a question of pulling the slack through. That will lie nicely on there. That will accept the upper one. And we're done. How straightforward is that? I mean, that's so much easier and neater than the last version. Uh, it also means that if you want to move on to a different model or take it from this aircraft to another one or sell it or whatever, you haven't had to drill extra holes, which might put some people off. So that is a big plus. The other thing that it's also been uh, that they've added to the V2 is they've added internal memory. So you can now run it without the, an SD card in, and it will store all your data. When you want to download it, you put an SD card in into which you've put a, uh, you've made a, a blank file called backup.txt, I think. I'm going from memory there, it's not very good. But anyway, it's, it's on the instructions on the site switch it on and that will encourage it to just download all of its missions onto the SD card. So you could actually, if you're wanting to do it for a specific reason, log lots of data, you could have it mounted completely internally out of the way and then sort of access it through this way as part of your maintenance or whatever. You could also look to mount it in here, but as I said, it was a little fiddly for me to get the SD card in and out. I didn't want to have to carry pliers or anything like that. So I figured an external mount solution there. It's very neat. Look, the wires sit flush you hardly notice it at all and that's really quite good so yeah so what's Flytrix all about there well what you now do is you log on to the Flytrix site with each uh, Flytrix call you get a, an activation code and the site allows you to basically download your uh, data from each mission as they call it and it will allow you then to represent your flight as a uh, on, on a Google map you can then download that data as a KML file you can look at it in Google Earth in 3d um, you can uh, use it to track your maximum height, your maximum distance, your maximum speed, your averages, your number of hours flown, all that kind of stuff. And you can, if you wish, choose to publish that in a public way so that everyone can see how marvellous you are. Um, and you can sort of go for badges and competitions, or you can just not. I only publish very few of my flights, and it's normally if they're going to be showing something that I've, I've wanted to test or a proof of concept. The rest of them I just keep privately logged and it's a great little logbook. It tells me how many hours I've done, it tells me what sort of performance I'm getting. Very useful if you're doing antenna mods, very useful if you're adding third party stuff to see how it's impacted your flight times, all that kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, there you go. Um, I think the Flytrix is a really nice little addition. Um, this V2 model is just lightweight and easy to fit and it sits there nicely doing its thing. And I recommend that you get one if you're at all interested in, in sort of looking at your aircraft and its performance. So that was it. That's the version two of the Flytrex core. 
Uh, if you want to see some of the other videos that I did on the read, um, on Flytrex and on the on the site itself, and again I'll put another link up there. Go and have a look at that one. Other than that, thank you very much for watching again, and um, some more stuff coming soon on the kitchen table. Cheers.